KE Lab, part one, uh, data and calculations. So this is a follow-up to the procedure you saw earlier for part one. And let's go right to our data and then we'll take a more holistic look at looking at the whole lab. So this was our independent variable. Uh, we chose to use two milliliters of 2.0 times 10 to the negative third molarity KSCN. We use two milliliters um, and then we use three milliliters for solution two, we use four milliliters for solution three, five for solution four and six for solution five. So these were things that we pre-measured out using the pipettes, okay? Now what happens is, is we added this two milliliters to, uh, to the iron or iron nitrate solution to get to 100 milliliters. So essentially 98 milliliters of the iron nitrate here, 97 here, 96 here, and so on. All right, just looking at this equation, again, Fe plus three kind of is a yellowish tint. You combine it with HSCM, but this gives you a really dark red complex if it's concentrated. Um, what happens is, is I wanted to clear up this yellow solution so it um, to give this more of a clear contrast for the FESCN plus two. So I use the acid that clarifies this, makes it a lot less dark, but you, this will still show up and that's what we're able to monitor over time. All right, so with, um, now let's say I just did pure Fe plus three solution with none of this, that's what I used as my blank and that we set that transmissions to 100. So if you had solution zero, and you should plot this, you're gonna have 100% transmittance, which ends up being 0% of absorbance, and that corresponds to zero concentration. So the origin zero, zero is a valid point in this calibration curve that you're gonna be setting up. Okay, let's go to the next one. And I think the first thing is, is let's look at our transmittance percentages. Um, if it went through the clear solution, it would be 100%, okay? But as transmittance goes down, absorbance should go up, okay? The more it transmits, the less it absorbs and so on. So this progressively got darker, transmittance was less and absorbance will go up. How did we convert transmittance to absorbance? Um, A, which is absorbance, equals the negative log of P, which will be transmittance. But notice that transmittance is not the percent, it's the decimal form of that. So I did the negative log of 0.69 and I come up with 0.16. Okay, for the next one, I do the negative log of 0.42 and I'm guessing you get a number bigger than 0.16, that's gonna go here and so on, so you're gonna fill in these five points. Okay, the next thing is, is what about this concentration? How do I figure that out? Well, if I look at this, of the HSCN, I had 0 0.00200 molar, 2.00 times 10 to the negative third molar. However, I only used two milliliters of that in solution one, and I used 98 milliliters of the Fe plus three. So I went through a dilution factor of two over 100. So 0 0.00200 times two over 100 gives me 4.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. So the assumption is because I have such a bigger concentration of Fe plus three, all of this, almost all of this HCN gets converted to FeSCN plus two. So we're going to assume this concentration of HCN is also the concentration of FeSCN plus two. So that's what I'm putting right here. Okay, when I get to this next one, solution two, I just plug in 0 0.0030, or I'm sorry, I still plug in 0 0.00200 because that was a molarity, but I'm going to times it by three over 100, and that's probably going to be 6.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. So you should be able to figure out those from there. Okay. I use the dilution factor. If you look down here, we kind of mentioned the chicka chicka boom boom method for doing that, but I think the dilution factor is the easier way to go. Okay, let's see. What we're gonna do in our calibration curve is we are gonna plot absorbance 
versus concentration. So I think this is on quote unquote page 90, and we're gonna go back to page 89 for the concentration curve. I think you have to go back a page, here it is. So here's an example, and this is the absorbance. We did all of these at a wavelength of 445 nanometers, and that is just a wavelength that's going to help us um, pick out that particular reddish color. And we have molar concentration right here. So the absorbance is that decimal between zero and 1.00. And then the concentration is probably something times 10 to the negative fifth. And you're doing these points. Notice zero, zero would be valid. You don't have a point here because we didn't do this. You'd have one, two, three, four, five things right there. All right, uh, it might, so use the zero, zero. Looking at the data, it's gonna have um, some considerable um, standard deviations with these things, but do the best you can with drawing a best fit line. And I would include zero, zero as one of those points. All right, let me just go to a little bit more of the overview for this lab. And let's see, I think I'm gonna hide this, scroll through. Okay, so you have this lab and, oh, one of the things you're supposed to be doing on the first page is the pre preliminary lab assignment. So that's something on the back of page 93 and I'll show you how those are numbered. I think you'll kind of see that as we go through. So then we had our part one. Next time we're gonna do part two, you'll see your procedure things. Okay, looking at things, you're filling in that data table on this piece. Show an example of each type of calculation. I actually modeled those both calculations. Um, when you get to the second day, there's a lot of calculations. You don't have to show everyone, but just one sample of each so you know how to do it. Kind of like I modeled on my packet. And you can do that down here as you're working, or you can do it right in the packet like I did. It's, it's really more there for you, but I'll still take a look for it. Okay, analysis, there's seven questions on page 92. We're gonna get to that. And then at the end, we'll look at our K values and see if we're getting, uh, we'll see how constant that is and we'll, we'll talk about that. And there's a little conclusion that you can do there. Okay, here's an intro. There is this little page 87, and you'll see 87, 88. Page 88 is mostly instructions. Page 89 shows the calibration curve, and it also shows directions for part two, which we'll see in the next video set. Um, this is something you should fill out. This was on page 90, and that's one we were just talking about. And you can write it out right there. And then this will be where we're gonna transfer some information and do a lot of calculations to ultimately get the components to figure out the equilibrium constant. So there's these steps A through N, although there's some adjustments where I've adjusted the method to take some shortcuts and we're gonna work with that on Thursday. Okay, so this kind of talks about those things and we did some adjustments about that. Um, these are the seven questions when you get done, more the analysis type and this is the pre-lab sheet right there that you can be working on. Um, there's a couple shortcuts. We'll talk about those on Thursday. And here is a graph paper, or you can do your calibration curve on the computer, but make it big so we can see it, or you can use this graph paper um, type of thing to jot those points. All right, I think that's a wrap up for overview of what we're doing. And then you'll wanna have that table on the top of page 90 complete and your calibration curve done and have watched all the videos for both parts one and two before coming Thursday. And then we'll kind of grind through those calculations at that time. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have questions. I think Wednesday, check your schedule. I think it's 12 to 12.30 is Q&A on this Wednesday if you had something and you wanted to talk about that. All right, thank you.